because we we suffered it first hand. We had like Norman Betterson. Him and his troops ran round and had all statements doctored. Everything up. 15, 20 years later, he's now the Chief Inspector of Merseyside Police, Norman Betterson. And him and another Chief Inspector called Bernard Hogan Howe was the, the people that targeted us and they developed the neighbourhood policing team to target us. And they were signed off for a um, deputy inspector called Mark Harrison, who was corrupt to the hilt. Now listen. Now this Mark Harrison and his neighbourhood team deliberately put drugs on kids and give them five years prison. Deliberately put imitation firearms on lads and give them 11 years prison. Deliberately arrested those, battered those and charged those with threats to kill with police with firearms. You know, this is what they was. Eventually, Mark Harrison and about six or seven of his cronies all got dismissed from the police force. But then they were rehired a couple of years later and given high-powered jobs on the Wirral. This is corruption in Merseyside Police. Now, that Mark Harrison was, that went through my ma's front door with his firm and smashed Billy's head in and said Billy attacked him with a knife and he never. Billy had been in, and it was all proven. Billy was paid £48,000 in court, but he'd done nine months prison. He was acquitted eventually. All that. When they've raided the house, they've put two nine millimetre bullets on him, a quarter ounce of cocaine, and said Billy attacked him with a Rambo knife. The reason he said Billy attacked him with the Rambo knife was because they battered the heart of him when he was asleep. You cut your, your John Users, your Carragas. They burst the door in, your Doolans, all these horrible Anderson. They burst the door in on Billy, Billy had been out Friday night. Now he's asleep, he's gone back to my ma's, pissed off his head, he's gone to my ma's, got his head down. Busy to kick the door in. Where Billy's been getting his head down in the spare room at the back. When the door opens, the bed's behind the door. And Billy was asleep, like that, on his hands. And when he burst in, he just went bang, the first whack was to the back of his head. Give him a seven inch scar, burst right open. And when they took the truncheon, when they took the truncheon away, a spray of blood's gone up the wall like you couldn't see with the human eye. So when he went like that, bam, and pulled the truncheon away and went back in with another one, because he had two seven inch, like seven inch and a five inch next to each other, and then he just combated to cover their asses with that. They've said he's had a Rambo knife and charged them with attempted murder on police, possession with class A with intent to supply, and possession with the, of the ammunition. Put him in custody for nine months. On the back of that assault, don't forget, years and years and years and years ago, he'd done himself in his head with his catalyzer gun. Remember I told you when I was 15, I had to kick his door in. He's got a big hole in his head, lying on the couch, blood pissing out of his head. He'd sort of got over some of it for ages. He could, he could still go out after it. Listen, he could still go out after it. He could still get off his face on coke and he could still have a nice day and a nice week and still be Billy G, okay? After that assault and that attack, he developed the worst form of epilepsy. Okay? After the attack by these coppers, he developed the worst form of ep ep epilepsy. So, Billy was at the point where a couple of times a week, 
during his sleep, he could just start vaulting on his bed and ripping his tongue with his teeth and his gums with his teeth. Like that off the bed. Sometimes he'd end up on the floor shaking and then he'd wake up the next morning and his mouth would be swelled up because his teeth had been ripping out of his inside off this epilepsy. And every time, when he got to that stage, every time he had one of them epileptic fits, it sort of deteriorated him in a sense of he was becoming vegetable. What happens when you go into what happens when you go into these epilepsy fits is you have a lack of oxygen to the brain. And having a lack of oxygen going to your brain is very, very serious and it can damp it. And the way Billy was caught up in his addiction and his way of life with these this bird and this madness. It was only going to end up one way. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is. So, this Mark Harrison, the day after that attack on Billy, has got a Liverpool Echo bag strapped across his chest. With four hundred neighbor, with four more neighborhood police officers carrying echo bags. The next day, think about what I'm saying. The next day in the morning, first thing in the morning, he's delivering echoes right around my Mars estate, and on the front page of it, it's got Billy unconscious, covered in blood, getting carried out my Mars house in handcuffs. Billy hadn't done all wrong. He was asleep after the night out. They went in, put coke, bullets, and ruined him. Ru I say they killed him. Because every time he had one of them fits, and every time he was deteriorating, I feel he didn't want to let his kids see him. That's my opinion, that's the way I think about it. But they go to court, we get the legal team involved, they've stitched them up, we want to prove them that they've stitched them up. So we, re we request certain things to happen for this trial. We request that we have impartial ballistics done on the bedroom. So the defence team sourced their own forensics team and done a ballistics on the bedroom, a forensic analysis on the bedroom. We also wanted the photos that they'd used in the echo and we wanted all the photos and we wanted to know how the man from the Liverpool echo was present at that raid at seven o'clock in the morning. So this is all the judges ordered the prosecution to disclose to the defence and they've had to do it. We wanted the custody suite from St Anne's. We wanted the hours, we wanted them coming in, we wanted them charged, we wanted them, all of it. We got it. We wanted the ballistics, we got the ballistics. And it all fell into place. But it all fell into place. The first thing that went on is the ballistics, their account of what happened, and my mum's and Billy's account of what happened, because that's all that was in the mouse. You know, my ma got thrown all over the gaff at the same time as this. You know, she gets a slap every time we got one. Twist. My ma's account was Billy was in bed after being out, and the bees just stormed in and started battering him. That was the account. Now, the version that they give is they've gone through the door. And when they've gone through the bedroom door, Billy is stood with his back to the window and is facing the door as they've come in. And when they've come in, 
He's gone at them with a Rambo knife. Remember the old Rambo knives with the compass and the matches in? They've had one of them in my room or whatever. And they've got that. And what, he, what they've said is Billy has come at them with that and started to stab him, but he had his vest on. Right? Now, that was their accounts. And the ballistics completely contradicted their version of events. Because they're saying Billy stood up by the window with a knife. And the ballistics are saying the first point of contact with your truncheon was when Billy's head was on the bed. We can tell you that's fact by the blood that's on the wall that we found with a fluorescent light. So the first point of contact with your baton that you're saying you used as defence because you had a knife stood up, you're lying. So that was the first thing that they won. The next minute, the judge has ordered the reporter from Liverpool to get in court and hold what's called like a Newton hearing. We want to know what, what was said to you, why was you at this address? So basically, before they've gone to me ma's address, this ma Harrison's held a meeting before they go in the cars and read the address, and in there he said, we're going to 25 Mary Paul Close, and the target is Billy G. Now, they never said they went there looking for Billy. You know, they've put it across like they've just gone there on a normal search. They didn't expect Billy to be in there. He's not labelled as living there. You know this book? But in that room, this Echo reporter has told a judge that they said, Billy G's the target. Now, when the Echo's gone there, he's not just taking pictures of them coming out with Billy. He's taken them beforehand and he's taken them whatever. So the judge has ordered that all them pictures be disclosed. So he had to. They battled not to, but they were forced to hand over the pictures. And then the custody suite, the cameras came in. So this copper, the John Hughes, who was saying he'd been attacked with, with the blade off Billy. When you look at the custody suite camera, you see him coming in, holding his hands across his vest or shirt, right? And then uh, he goes in a room, comes back out the room, with his hand gone, with stab wounds on his shirt, holding a, hand, holding a knife. Right? So he's putting it across like Billy stabbed him up in the room and when he's coming to the custody suite, his shirt's already f But when he's coming out, when he's coming out of my Mars with Billy in handcuffs and the Echo Man's taking pictures, there's not a single mark on his shirt. So now you've got forensics saying you're lying. Now you've got CCTV footage to prove that you're lying. Billy gets released, gets 48 grand, the busies get sacked and get rehired years later. But whilst he's in prison, he's suffering. Bad with the injuries. Ruined him, it did. I hold the police, Mark Harrison, responsible for what had gone on with Billy. He done himself in the head and he was very, very sick of it, but he recovered to the point where he can get out and still party with his bed. When they done that to him, when they beat him up with them truncheons in that bedroom, he was never the same and developed this epilepsy and he deteriorated as he went on over the years. And he just couldn't survive it. He couldn't... I don't think he could handle waking up. I don't think he could handle having to be dependent on a woman that was really abusing him physically and mentally. Couldn't handle it. You know, a few weeks before he'd done himself, this woman stabbed him in the chest. And when the busies and all that have turned up, Billy's turned round, so his, so his kids' ma didn't get arrested and the kids and all that got damaged and said, I stabbed myself in the chest. Sectioned him for 28 days. When it was his bird that done him. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's messy, isn't it? Messy. He said, he said it was a miracle he survived. The attack with the, you know, what he'd done himself when he tried to unlive himself with the catalyzer gun. You know, saying it was a miracle he survived. There's no way he should have survived. He was in a coma for three and a half months. He had to cut a big chunk out of his skull here and remove whatever. But he was sweet. He weren't having none of these mad fits and that. And then the police do this to him and he develops all this mass. And he just couldn't recover off it like that. He just ended up unliving himself years later, didn't he? In my ma's house. Johnny found him. Came in after the pub, he was hanging on the stairs. Messy, innit? Da -da -da.